Hello everyone, Pally Tom here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. We are still at the beginning of the A through Z playthrough, where we are playing through every single character in the game, from the A's to the Tazdingos. Hope you guys are having a great day today. We have landed on Anubarak today. Historically, one of the strongest tanks in the game, at least as far as I'm concerned, back before the current Hero League system was added to the game, and they had the rank 50 to rank 1 system that used to be implemented. This was the character that I used to climb more ranks than any other in the game. He was phenomenal back then, kind of died off for a little while, but definitely made his presence known once again in the Nexus as it is right now. He has changed considerably in the past year. I believe in March, he was given a rework where they kind of moved some of his talents around, made certain tiers of talents a little bit more appealing than they used to be, but also did something interesting where Anubrak and Stitches were kind of the first characters to receive spell armor as a level one talent, kind of making them seem like they would be the best counters to mages on the enemy team. That system has kind of changed a little bit since then, where you see characters that just have baseline physical armor or baseline spell armor. I don't remember if he has baseline now, but Nerubian armor, regardless, is still a pretty good talent. Years ago, back when we were talking about the rank one times, the beetle build was the dominant build because it would give you the most sustain, and most characters would go for the locust swarm in order to deal AoE damage around them, but also be able to initiate hard for their team and try to survive through everything with the healing that this ability provides, and also just try to, like, pad their numbers on the meter just a little bit. But now, with more high-value, high-priority characters being added to the game, Cocoon has risen to the top. So we're going to talk a little bit more about a new Barak today. Hopefully we get a pretty good game. For the Frozen Throne! All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Tomb of the Spider Queen today. The friendly team, Kel'Thuzad, Anubarak, Illidan, Nova, and Zul Jin. The enemy team, Rexar, Vala, Genji, Leoric, and Kale Thos. There's a car alarm going off outside. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. Uh, we are going to go for... Okay, so basically the beetle talents used to be really good, but now you have talents like this where you receive spell armor on your beetles. Why do you need spell armor on beetles? They don't do anything. They don't do... Why would they need spell damage reduction? They have a hundred health. So it's like they took the dominant builds and kind of skewed them to make you not really want to pick those talents ever. And I don't quite get it. I do think versus this team, we are going to go for Regeneration Master. Uh, Regeneration Master alone by itself has been changed in the past year as well. Uh, maybe not the past year, but definitely has changed since its original... Um, way it was built. I don't know. It's original cause. It's original stance in the game. Basically, you would just get more HP regen when you gathered more globes. That still happens. Gathering a regeneration globe increases your health regeneration by one per second up to 30. So after 30 globes, you have 30 more health regen. But, um, now you also get a health bonus at the end. So on small apps like this, you can actually do a lot of good just moving around trying to get as many globes as possible. Now, if you've never seen a Nubarak before, his Q ability is a straight line skill shot. He did not go for convection oven. Straight line skill shot. It will knock up everyone in range so we can begin making as many pregnancy jokes as we want to. Uh, and it's completely okay, right? Because we're knocking people up. His W ability is a shield that goes around him. Very short cooldown, seven seconds here. And it does give you a pretty decent amount of shielding. Uh, this has been ba okay. Basically, I was gonna say what has and what has not been nerfed in the past year, but basically everything has been nerfed. His rework was so good. He had so much crowd control. He had so much sustain. He had so much healing from various builds that everything has kind of been tweaked since the rework. The main reason that the rework happened was simply because of a build variety issue, and this is something that I'm I'm really happy that Blizzard does. We kind of talked about it a little bit, a little bit, excuse me, in the Alarak video where Alarak had one build and that's all people did. Well, Alarak wasn't alone in that. 
Anubarak was in the same situation. Every game, there was no thought process going into your talents whatsoever. There was an optimal way to play, and if you didn't play that optimal way, you were pretty much viewed as just hurting your team. I don't know where he was going. Team, I don't know what he was doing. Let's go ahead and grab these butts. Notice Genji can't really deal too much damage to us because we have that shield up all the time. I think I am going to go for Bed of Barbs here. This is one of his newer talents. Adds even more crowd control to the crowd control that a new Brack already had. I really do view this character as one of the best CC sources in the game. He's able to control the battlefield way more than most other tanks. And it's a really fun playstyle if you've never tried it. But Bed of Barbs. Let's see if we can stop this Genji from moving away. <laughs> I, almost, I almost read him like a book. I almost read him like a book. Just adds a slow over time to our Q ability. So if we do catch someone with this straight line skill shot that you see right here, then they have a little bit of time where they can't quite move. Oh, are we dead? Calculated, boys. Look at that health regen always already paying off. Already paying off. We do need to make sure that Genji doesn't come kill us, but I think we are okay. So better barbs. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Create a bed of spikes along Impale's path that slows enemies by 25% and deals 27 damage per second for 3.5 seconds. So it also adds a little bit of damage too. Not a ton, not a ton. And there are some other decent options here at this ability range too. Under King being a really good one as well. So our W ability is something you want to be spamming all the time in order to generate these beetles, which is your trait. You're a scarab host, you spawn beetles, they go out and they hit stuff for you. There were builds historically for a new Brack where you would focus on nothing but regen and you could get a ton of regen from your beetles hitting things. I believe those talents are still in the game. Yeah, Leeching Scarabs. That's still the game. You can still do that if you wanted to, but generally speaking, there's better talents at that tier. And you'll kind of notice that a lot of the beetle build style a new Brack play just feels very antiquated in the game's current state. Uh, but our Burrow ability, our Burrow Charge, that's our E ability, received some very significant changes in the past year. We're gonna reduce our cooldown, think, I think. While Hardened Carapace is active, taking damage from enemy abilities reduces its cooldown by one second, up to three seconds. Versus this enemy team who's gonna be throwing out a lot of abilities all of the time, very, very likely they're, we're gonna be able to take three seconds off of our shield with every application of it. Which I shouldn't have to tell you is pretty good. It's pretty good. But, Burrow Charge received some significant changes. It used to make you completely immune to damage while you were underground. You are unstoppable when you dive underground, so when we do initiate with Burrow, we are unstoppable. But previously, you could use it to avoid damage from things like Tracer's Pulse Bomb. You could avoid damage from things like Pyroblast entirely, simply by waiting for the Pyroblast to hit you and then burrowing underground as it approached. It was a very easy way to avoid most things in the game without too much of a thought process, to be totally honest. Looks like we will pick up a kill on Misha here, and you'll see the enemy team unfortunately does kind of move in on me as I was the front line for our team there, which is unfortunate, but hey, we'll be fine. We'll be fine, team. We won't let that happen again. Uh, the enemy team is almost level nine, or excuse me, almost level 10. First recording of the day, guys. We're getting into the rhythm. Don't worry. I'm just going to keep fucking up on everything that I'm saying. Hopefully, Illidan can get away from this. Yeah, he's chilling. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are losing top lane right now, and the team is still just kind of poised middle, so top has been lost. Let's see if we can move up here and get a couple region globes. Looks like there are some in the area. Some other tanks also lost that unstoppable thing on their gap closers, so at least... At least Anubarak still has that. At least he's unstoppable when he's burrowing. I know Muradin used to be unstoppable while he was doing his dwarf jump thing, uh, but they completely removed that from the game. It was just a little bit too strong. So Misha is currently destroying our back line. I'm trying to stay up at the front to kind of enable something for our team, but unfortunately, we weren't quite able to make anything happen there. Now, I do think Cocoon is better in most situations. But versus this team that doesn't really have a healer, I'm starting to think that Locust Swarm might be the best talent for us to pick up here. We can use Locust Swarm to heal ourselves as we dive in on the enemy team. And Locust Swarm has actually had its damage and healing buffed in the past. 
to make it a little bit more of a desirable talent for new rack players to pick up because it kind of fell off. They nerfed it a lot, especially after the rework. It was nerfed a lot, but Cocoon had its pick rate just escalated a thousand percent. Like everyone was picking Cocoon. So it was a little bit too strong. So they nerfed the range on Cocoon and buffed the damage and healing from Locust Swarm to make it a little bit more desirable. Uh, we're currently at 15 globes, which is not too bad for me, boys. Not too bad for me at all. Uh, we might be able to secure a kill here on the Rexar. It looks like not enough damage follow-up to make it happen. But there's the guillotine from Tazdingo. Going to secure that no problem. And we can continue pushing in here. I am starting to notice a little bit of mana problems here on the good old beetle. As we've been in lane for a long time, uh, that's starting to be an issue. But we'll just go ahead and grab this and be on our way out. Looks like we don't have sippy cups available, so I am going to have to go back all the way to the base, unfortunately. But we're chilling. We're chilling. Build's going okay. We're doing well. The team's uh, actually ahead on XP now. We managed to turn that around. We're a little disorganized right now. I, I do feel like we should all be pushing the same lane. Uh, Illidan currently in the middle. Looks like he's winning a trade, though. So you can't really be too mad at him. Oh, never mind. He's not winning anymore, boys. Not winning anymore. Uh, mine! We saved him! We saved him, team! We're the hero! All right, we'll grab that glove and back up. Looks like the fight in the bottom lane is still lingering. Uh, Leoric moving forward. We'll go ahead and try to CC him as he leaves that creepy walk. We do miss just a little bit. One thing we could do now to improve our clear speed on camps is actually, and our actual team fight ability, is just picking up... Uh, oh my god, I've never read the name of that talent. I'm so I'm gonna die because I was so confused about the name of this talent. You're to you're spines. Did I say that right? Probably not. <laughs> but essentially, after our shield is done doing whatever our shield's doing, it's gonna blow up, and it's gonna deal some pretty good damage. Now I was low on health there, but because we had the locust swarm going and dealing damage to Misha and the minions in the area, I knew that we would be healed up just fine. Uh, let's see if we can do some damage to this Leoric. He does seem to be stepping up pretty far. Oh, I can't do anything if he's doing March of the Black King, unfortunately. I can move in and try to body block now, but of course the creepy walk does mean that he's going to be able to progress forward. We unfortunately are not able to take him down, but Rexar moving up behind Leoric may be overextended just a little bit too far. And he will fall for that mistake. Nice. Now, unfortunately, with our spiders, we didn't get too much done, but I can go ahead and turn these butts in. Now that we have the numbers advantage and I was able to save Illidan's resources, and we should be able to get something finished here. Hopefully, Illidan won't be taken down. It is a 2v1 now, unfortunately, and he did fully commit with that hunt there. Hopefully, he'll be able to get out. Looks like they forced Genji back. His health was too low. He didn't want to continue, so... That's good, that's good. The spiders once again spawning. They are gonna be moving into all three lanes about evenly. We're pushed up about the same in every lane. Looks like we were able to snipe the bottom fort. Uh, let's go ahead and just try to initiate in here on this Kael'thas, slowing him down with our Q and taking him out. No problem, the Phoenix won't save him here. Now we're gonna move in and just start tanking this tower, waiting for the spider to catch up to us. Unfortunately, the spider's real slow, team. We could still go in on this Leoric, go ahead and pop our ult, and we should be able to heal up no problem, especially if someone on the friendly team would like to deal some damage here. Unfortunately, they're all just kind of watching me tank that until, until I die, then they're like, oh, well, let's use everything. One of the best things that you can do on a noob rack, though, is just use your body to block movement. Your E ability is a great enabler to move into position and cut off walkways, kind of like I did that Leoric there. He wasn't able to move in between the tower and the fort because I was occupying the main walkway there. He would have had to move all around and then I could just readjust or he would have had to move this way and I could just readjust. A noob rack does have one of the bigger hitboxes in the game, so be sure you're utilizing that and using your E ability, not only for the crowd control aspect of it, but also for the movement, like incapacitating someone just by putting your body in the way. It's really important. We are gonna go for Epicenter here at level 16. I do believe the radius of this was nerfed. 
at some point, but that that could be just entirely inaccurate. I think I think it was. I don't know for sure. We are spreading the bomb a little bit here, but it looks like Tazdingo still wants to move in. Is there a way to just see if I have spell armor? Is there a stat for that? Spell armor 0%. So no. No, spell armor 20. So we do have baseline spell power reduction. I mentioned that at the start of the start of the video. I couldn't remember if he actually had it or not. We do actually have it. And then we can make it even better with our level one talent as well. We'll go ahead and pop Locust Swarm here, try to survive through this damage, and go ahead and use our Q our W ability every time it's off cooldown as well. And as you can see, surprisingly tanky. Even though we're not doing too much damage here as a team. Which always sucks a little bit, but you know what? This part of play nub, this part of play nub. You are a team enabler. You set up situations for them to thrive in. Whether or not they actually do thrive in those situations is kind of up to them. It's like the old analogy where you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Well, a new brat can crowd control people until the end of time and live through a lot of stuff, honestly. I, I think a self-sustain is very underrated. But... You know, if your team doesn't capitalize on that crowd control, then you're kind of just sitting there with an enemy team surrounding you. But generally speaking, our team's doing very well. We are three levels ahead of the enemy team right now, and things are looking pretty good. Nova is going to take a lot of damage here, but it looks like she'll be fine. I'll go ahead and turn my 12 in. We do have enough as a team to get the next objective going, which obviously would be a pretty big advantage for us right now. Getting the objective right now would probably bring our team up to level 20. Uh, Newbrack is so good. Now, I will say that I don't think he has as much ability or talent diversity as the other characters that we've talked about. Yes, some of these talents can be swapped out. Like, if you didn't want to do Bed of Barbs, you could go for uh, specifically the Underking. But simply because his his um, Beetle talents in, in particular are so underwhelming. I think that kind of limits the amount of play that the character, or the, the amount of diversity that the character can actually have, which is unfortunate. Not too worried here, we can disengage pretty hard with our burrow. If I didn't mention already, you can tap burrow again to come out of the ground earlier than the like full extent of the skill shot here. And then that circle at the end is our knock up area at the end of the skill shot, so. Don't feel like you have to ride the, the train all the way to the end. Whoa! Oh, unfortunately, I was crowd controlled. Was trying to pop Lucas Swarm there. Planning on using that to heal up during that fight, but unfortunately, we were taken down. Now at level 20, once again, I do think this is a great tier. Most characters now have fantastic level 20 tiers now that can totally, like, ramp up what your build has already been doing or make up for a little bit of your shortcomings and this is no exception if your team is doing a great job of capitalizing on all of your crowd control then you can go for rewind and use your q ability again use your w ability again use your e ability again and if you do try to go for the beetle build that means you also spawn three more beetles there which could be good honestly if uh, you you are going that direction but uh, generally speaking it's a pretty awful build so prob probably don't do that but if your team's doing a great job of actually crowd controlling the enemy or actually capitalizing on your crowd control rewinds a great pickup here also gives you more survivability by allowing you to cast your w ability again nullification shield i'm not a fan of generally activate to gain 60 spell armor for five seconds can be good in certain situations but it's very very specialized and you'll notice that a new doesn't necessarily have a lot of built-in defenses to physical attacks simply spell attacks are his forte which is kind of weird it's kind of kind of strange uh what i ended up picking up was the life-stealing beetle thing is always going to be here. We always have a locust going out and doing something, which will help us stay alive. We'll go ahead and pop all of our abilities here and try to focus down this Leoric. Get out of that March of the Black King. Re-engage, crowd control him, and that is one person taken down there. Let's see if we can save our Kel'Thuzad. He doesn't... Okay, I was going to say he doesn't need it, but apparently he did. Very close call there. Very close call. But he does use his... Flactory to return to the fight immediately. I don't know if that was worth. There's really not a lot going on right now. Our team isn't alive. Uh, apparently, he wants to do boss. We could certainly do that. Certainly. Certainly. So, what I picked up was the Hive Master. 
Gain a permanent vampire locust, so kind of the effect of our heroic ability, but just up some of the time. And he is going to be healing us for a decent amount. Goes well with Region Master, especially if you're able to cap it off. Let's go ahead and make sure we stand on this at the end. There we go. And then uh, the Vampire Locust deals 349 damage and returns to heal a new rank for 84 health. So just does damage. I believe it said every three seconds. It'll go out, do something, then come back to you, which is pretty nice. He takes care of you. He looks after you. Uh, we do need three more gloves in order to finish off that quest. Looks like the friendly team may be fighting in the middle lane. Yes, they are. As Genji moves in, will he take down Taz Dingo? He will, but he won't get too much further. We do save the butts there, so we can... Um, continue to build those up. We're not going to be able to turn them in anytime soon, but we have a lot of free time simply because the enemy team is dealing with that boss that we picked up there. I'm going to go ahead and get a region globe here really quick and then try to grab this one with the bribe of Nova. We finish our region globe quest. So now we have 5,066 health with a shield that we could potentially cast every four seconds as well as a pretty respectable 40 health regen per second and a scarab that'll be moving out into the world or a locust i guess i should say that'll be moving out into the world and providing us with even more health regen and even more damage output when we are attacking things as well as the rest of our kit that is simply one of the best crowd control kits in the game and well, we have a heal on our heroic ability for when everything we have already said just isn't quite enough. Really, really fun tank to play. Really engaging tank to play. And it's because of all of the, like, the accumulation of everything that we've done here. Just kind of adding up to a very well-rounded kit at the end. I would say if there's anything lacking, it's the damage of a new Brack. But as you can see here, we're doing better than our Illidan, unfortunately. So, he's definitely not a bruiser. You know what I mean? He's definitely a tank. He's not there to rough someone up, although he can, kind of. He's there simply to make sure his allies stay safe and to control the pacing on the battlefield. So, uh, as we're approaching the 20 minute mark, both teams are above level 20. And well, we need to make sure that we keep them alive. We need to make sure that we keep ourselves alive as well. March of the Black King is happening over here. We'll go ahead and just make sure we're in range for that very quickly. Go ahead and pop Locust Swarm as soon as I'm not being crowd controlled anymore and deal some pretty good damage to everything around us. Hopefully healing up enough to stay alive. The Locust. Oh, look at it go. Look at it go. Let's go ahead and get away from Misha. Crowd control Rexar. Make sure he's frozen. Core team. Let's go. Let's go. Probably middle would be the best way because we already have mercenaries there. Uh, hopefully they agree with me. Yep, get up the push and bottom. No, they're coming up. Okay. So with this push, we should be able to end the game here. You know, one of the things I really like about Anubarak is he's one of those tanks that doesn't necessarily have to have a support nearby. He can take care of himself. He can heal up himself. He can sustain himself with the right build, which feels really, really good for solo queue. And it enables just random players who are just there to deal damage to deal a little bit more damage. All around great character. I would say the rework improved him. Although I do wish that the Beatles get a little bit more love in the future because I think they're just lagging behind the rest of the potential that the build has. So that's my thoughts on a new wreck in the past year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Although let's be honest, most of you aren't new. I appreciate you guys coming back. It feels so good to see the same people watching this series for the third year in a row. It really does. It really does. So at level one, we did go for Regeneration Master, Bed of Barbs, Chitinous Plating, Locust Swarm, your that one, Epicenter, and then Hive Master at level 20. I, t I have notes here. Did I miss anything? Nope, we're good. All right. Thank you all for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed. Up next, we are going to have a look at Artanis, and I believe the big Artanis rework did happen in the past year. So he is drastically different from what he was before, I think. If not, sorry. But still a fun character to play regardless. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Okay, bye.